I'm a Canadian girl training to be a whiskey distiller in Scotland. Welcome to the Distilled Kitchen, where we're making British dishes and cocktails, because every good dish deserves a good drink. Today, we're making a delightful dish featuring haggis, the Balmoral chicken. Depending on where you are, it may be hard to get your hands on haggis. So you can follow the same recipe, but replace the haggis with a melting cheese like Fontina, Gouda, or Asiago instead. First, I'll lay down a wet cloth before placing my cutting board on top. This will help the board stay in place. I have two boneless chicken breasts here. I usually don't purchase boneless chicken breasts as they dry out easily, which makes them difficult to cook well. However, this dish is foolproof, so you won't have to worry about eating dry, bland chicken. We'll take our chicken breast and cut down lengthwise into the breast, about halfway deep into the meat. Then on each side, we'll cut it down lengthwise again. We're opening up the meat so we have more surface area to work with. We'll put a piece of cling film over the meat and using a meat tenderizer, we'll gently pound the meat to uniformly flatten it up. If you don't have a tenderizer, you can use a rolling pin or even the bottom of a heavy cooking pot. Great, now we'll take off the piece of cling film and lay it down again. On top of the cling film, we'll lay down five slices of streaky bacon. The bacon strips should just slightly overlap on top of one another. Perfect, we'll lay our chicken breast on top. It should look like this. You can season it with some salt and pepper if you like, but go easy on the salt as the bacon will be salty already. Now it's time to put the haggis in. I got the haggis from a local butcher shop and it was prepared in a round casing. I'll cut off a finger sized piece and place it in a cigar shape down one side of the chicken breast. We'll roll up the chicken breast now, taking care that none of our haggis falls out. Make sure the edges of the chicken are all tucked in neatly beneath it as well. Now we have this little bundle which we'll place on the bacon strips. Using the cling film as a guide, we'll roll up the chicken bundle with the bacon layer going around it. We'll take either end of the cling film and spin it to tighten our chicken bundle in the center. Inside the cling film, the chicken is easy to mold into shape. Now, we'll preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. In a frying pan, heat up a bit of butter. On medium heat, we'll put our two Balmoral chickens on, making sure that the side with the loose bacon ends are on the bottom. Look how well it's holding its shape. None of the haggis is falling out at all. We'll cook our Balmoral chickens for three to five minutes to make sure that the loose bacon ends will cook and seal up what's inside. When the bacon is cooked, we'll turn the Balmoral chicken over in the pan to give the top some color as well. After three to five minutes, we'll finish our Balmoral chickens in the oven. We'll cover the chicken loosely with tin foil and bake for 16 to 18 minutes. You might be thinking I've been a bit fussy with my preparation of the chicken. What with hitting it, rolling it in cling film, and frying it first in the frying pan. And I have been fussy, but if you're feeling lazy, you can skip all those steps and just cut lengthwise down the breast to create a pocket. Stuff that with haggis and wrap it in bacon with your fingers and pop it straight in the oven for 25 minutes. Meanwhile, we'll prepare our whiskey sauce. Take a quarter of an onion or a shallot and cut it crosswise. Then make lengthwise cuts down the onion, making sure none of those cuts go entirely through. Our onion is already divided up into small sections, so when we cut down like so, ta-da, the onion is minced. I've gone over it a few more times with my knife to make sure it's minced finely for our sauce. In a measuring cup, put in one vegetable stock cube and fill it up with 300 milliliters of hot water. We'll throw in a bay leaf and stir. Now our stock is ready. In the same frying pan as before, we'll add a knob of butter and our finely minced onion. Just sweat the onions until they start to turn translucent in color. Then 
we'll add the stock and let it simmer. To this we'll add 200 milliliters of Scottish double cream and after one minute we'll add a wee dram of scotch whiskey or as much as you like and a tablespoon of grainy mustard for an acidic note. Add salt and pepper to taste and gently simmer the sauce to your desired consistency. I've just taken the Balmoral chickens out of the oven. We'll plate up by cutting one crosswise. I've made some honey glazed carrots and some mashed taddies to go along with my Balmoral chicken. And we'll pour some creamy whiskey sauce on top of all of that. All that's left is to garnish it with a parsley sprig to get that Instagram worthy shot. I can't wait to tuck into this, but wait, we forgot our drink. This plate of food has a lot of flavors and textures on it already. We have a creamy sauce, salty bacon, sweet carrots, and earthy haggis. So let's make a Manhattan to help neutralize all those bold flavors. The Manhattan was invented sometime in the 1860s or 1870s in, yep, you guessed it, New York City. Although the true origins of this cocktail are unknown, one popular but false story is that it was invented at a banquet in honor of presidential candidate Samuel J. Tilden. I'll fill a large glass with this mysterious bag of ice that's been left in the freezer for God knows how long by one of my housemates. And some proper ice cubes as well. To this, I'll add 60 milliliters of Kentucky bourbon, but you can use any kind of whiskey and 30 milliliters of sweet vermouth. Sweet vermouth hails from Italy and is a fortified wine with a selection of herbs and spices added to it to give it complexity. This will add a herbal character to our Manhattan as well as give it some bitterness and sweetness. Next, two dashes of Angostura bitters for extra bitterness and a bar spoonful of cherry juice for some extra sweetness. I'll gently stir it with my bar spoon now. And if you ask a real bartender, they'll tell you how to correctly position your fingers on the bar spoon to stir it in a way where not too much ice melts and you don't dilute your cocktail down too much. But as you know, I'm a distiller, not a bartender. So just stir it however you want to. Anywho, once we have it stirred, we'll strain it into a small brandy glass and we'll finish our cocktail by putting three maraschino cherries on a toothpick and laying it on top as a garnish. Now, it's the moment I've been waiting all day for. Tea time! The haggis is soft and velvety like a pate and the chicken is still very moist since the fat from the bacon has acted as a barrier to prevent it from drying out in the oven. The whiskey sauce has a richness from the cream and there's also a slight tang from the grainy mustard with the whiskey being a subtle background note. The Manhattan is indeed bitter and warm with a lingering sweetness and I think it works well to neutralize all the other flavors going on here. I've worked up quite an appetite making all this food, so don't forget to subscribe below and I'll see you next time!